What's up guys, it's Chris Wolf here and welcome back to the channel. And in this video, I'm going to talk about what I believe is next for Deontay Wilder. Uh, what I think he should do. Uh, should he take the rematch or not? Or, you know, take a break and then come back later. Uh, so, let me get straight into it. So first, when it comes to the rematch... Uh, I think I think he should obviously take the rematch because I do believe Wilder will be back. Uh, I've already said multiple times that win, lose, or draw, I'm rocking with Deontay Wilder because of his uh, character. Because of just because of Deontay Wilder, just because I like his character, uh, I like what he's done. I like uh, his story. And I just like Deontay Wilder as a fighter as well. So, when it comes to the rematch, I think he should take the rematch. But as far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I think he has 30 days to uh, activate his rematch rematch clause. Uh, honestly, I would tell him activate it, but don't. I would probably tell him like activate it on the 28th day, 30th day. So obviously. I don't know how it works, but I would probably activate it late to, uh, it doesn't even matter, honestly. This is just me, but basically, like, just to get to recover and everything, uh, because he did lose the Fury in a fashion I never thought I would see Deontay Wilder lose in, especially with the busted eardrum. Uh, yeah, busted eardrum, which obviously had to throw off his equilibrium, but... Obviously, Fury, he came in with a great game plan uh, with Javan Sugar Hill. I think his first name is... Yeah, Sugar Hill. His trainer, Sugar Hill. He came forward with a great game plan. And Fury, he's going to be doing that every time he steps in the ring because he has... He's basically a fat boy in the ring. And he could just... In, uh, he could overpower people with how much weight he has. And basically, the way he fought Deontay Wilder is by coming forward... Uh, Coming forward, putting all that weight on him. He basically fought like how uh, Klitschko used to fight. Except he actually came forward. Klitschko, you know, he used to jab people. Jab them and then lean all over them. Put them in headlocks and everything. Uh, and Tyson Fury did the same thing. And the reason it's so effective, more effective, is because Tyson Fury is 273. While Deontay Wilder is 231. So he's way heavier. Uh, he's leaning all over him, so... Uh, whoever his opponent is, like Wilder in this fight, uh, Fury's leaning all over him, so he has to constantly push him off. Uh, he has to constantly fight back more weight than he would uh, have to if it was some other opponent. And then, obviously, uh, wrapping his head around Deontay Wilder, like, he's kind of putting him in a guillotine, but not really, but it's honestly, like, like Klitschko used to do it, like, he used to like, wrap his arm around, tight around the opponent's head like he's putting him in a guillotine, but obviously it's not too tight. But it's, like, it's draining the person, you know. So, uh, we've seen this before, except Fury. He's obviously a superior boxer to uh, Klitschko, in my opinion. So, with that being said, I do think Deontay Wilder should activate the uh, rematch clause because I do believe he's going to come back. Now, how he comes back is the question. So, uh, after watching the fight, uh, watching the fight and like letting like a day or two pass, yeah, I think it was like a day or whatever. I was like, in my head, I was like, the way he lost, this should be a humbling learning experience. Because now, because I was talking about this uh, with my girl and I was like it's hard to try and learn something because obviously Deontay Wilder can box and he has some skill because you can't be a bronze medalist and not have skill because you obviously with his right hand you have to have timing you have to know how to set people up with the jab or with the pawn jab things of that nature uh, you have to know how to bait people in but it's easy to get sucked in to think that you only need power to uh, defeat everybody. And 
obviously he got sucked into that, especially like people like to say he didn't fight anybody, but he's fought people who were better boxers than he actually was. But he was able to neutralize that with his power. And then it being a heavyweight division, all it takes is one punch. But going up against Fury, okay, let me actually go over. Luis Ortiz, he's a very talented boxer. Uh, he could have beat Deontay Wilder. He had better boxing skills and everything, but Deontay Wilder caught him. Fury, the reason Fury is so hard to beat is because he uses a lot of feints. He basically confuses the opponent. Opponent. Uh, uh, what you call it? What What's that quote? They say great fighters uh, bait punches, and that's basically what Fury does. He has you guessing constant. He has you guessing constantly in the match, and then when you throw a punch, you find out you're getting countered because he basically pulled your punches and set you up by thinking, making you think he was open when he wasn't open at the same time. So I'm saying this is probably a this is like a humbling learning experience for Deontay Wilder. Because now it's going to show, even though he says, uh, he has said multiple times that, you know, even the greatest fighters lost, he doesn't have a problem with losing. Because even the greatest fighters lost, like Muhammad Ali lost everything. Now it's going to show how he's come back, how he comes back. And by him coming back, it's time to actually go to the drawing board and come up with a different plan. And what I mean by a different plan is that now it's time, now you're going against Fury since he beat Wilder, he's the number one heavy, number one heavyweight. I still got Wilder at number two because I believe that he could beat Anthony Joshua. But Fury, he's the number one heavyweight. You know he's gonna come in uh, with a ton of weight. Sugar Hill even said he's gonna fight exactly like that. Fury said he's gonna keep fighting like that because he felt good doing it. So now it's time to go to the drawing board and I think you have three months before the next fight. So you got three months to either stay the same and rely on the power or dramatically improve your boxing skill set. Dramatically improve your boxing skill set to give you a much better chance at beating Fury, not just by trying to land one punch, but uh, trying to box him as well. So, in the fight, uh, in the fight, I didn't have Fury winning all seven rounds. I had Fury. I had Fury winning six rounds. Uh, I had Wilder winning the second round, and I thought it was because Wilder was more active. He was more accurate. He landed more punches in that round. I, but that was after. I mean, that was before the busted eardrum. I think once he busted his eardrum, then that was basically it for the fight. But Wilder, he's going to have to come in. He's going to have to go. As soon as he's healed up, he has to get himself together and basically learn how to box and get to a great enough level or a good enough level to where he can handle Fury in the ring. And what I mean by that is he has to know... You He basically has to learn how to box... On a great, he has to learn a lot in three months, basically. Now, people may say uh, three months isn't enough time. First off, actually, let's not even go there. Some people are going to say that Wilder, he just wasn't ready for the fight. I mean, not ready for the fight, but he just got outboxed and beat. And he'll be back. But some people are going to say that he should obviously come back. Be more ready. Not to say that he isn't ready, but basically, they're basically going to say he should do exactly what he did, but be more aware of what Fury is going to do and everything, since he knows what Fury is going to do now. And then there's going to be the people like me who are going to say he needs to go in the gym, learn how to box, get the skill set down, uh, you know, work on his footwork, work on slipping, work on fainting his opponent to pull their punches so he can set them up. Work on... Uh, his timing, work on his technique and everything. And people, a lot of people are going to disagree. Some people are going to disagree. Some people aren't going to disagree. But the people who are, who are probably going to say that uh, he's going to come back, but he doesn't really need to focus on his skill set, 
or uh, and that he just needs to get back in the ring, come back in a better mindset, get back in the ring, and uh, use his power. Those people are a majority of the people who would never improve at anything. And I'm not saying it as a slight to those people, but what I'm saying is the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. So this isn't a slight at you, but it's just letting you know that that type of mindset and mentality won't get you far anywhere in life. And you may say that, you know, Deontay Wilder, he has 42 knockouts. He's only lost one time and everything. And I do understand that point that he has 42 knockouts. But the fact remains that he's fighting against a guy who actually almost unified the division before he became a cokehead and everything, which is Tyson Fury. He's fighting against a top skilled boxer who's who's probably not, I wouldn't say the most skilled, but he's probably like top three of most skilled fighters in the uh in boxing as far as skill set goes so to simply rely on okay i have 42 knockouts uh i've only lost one all i need to do is get one shot it's a supremely limited way of thinking because that one shot will never come and just like it never came in this fight even though wilder was hurt early it still never came and he was he didn't even have the energy to throw a right hand so simply relying on that one shot, it's a supremely limited way of thinking. And it actually shows that that type of mindset is more of a failure mindset because you're not looking to evolve and become a better fighter or evolve to create a better mindset. You're just staying exactly where you are. Now, if Wilder does what I think he should do and what a lot of people think he should do is... Learn boxing, invest yourself in boxing, work on your skill set and techniques every day, constantly, until the rematch comes up. Obviously, obviously he can't do every day because he has to let his body rest. But you get what I mean, the mentality of it's me versus the world because everybody's going to be doubting him. Not everybody, but majority of the world is going to be doubting him, doubting him in the rematch, but he, he takes the mentality of learning the skill set techniques, getting it down, being uh, efficient and everything. Uh, learning how to uh, throw a snap and jab or a power jab just so people can't come in on you uh, like Fury was able to do. Learning how to stand your ground and maybe even fight on the inside because if you keep backing up, it's going to tire you out. Things of that nature. He'll have a much better chance at defeating Fury uh, defeating Fury than he would if he stayed at where he is now. And what I mean by this is that the power isn't going to go anywhere. We know power. We know his power has lasted him 42 uh, fights. He's got 42 knockouts. So just learning the skill isn't going to take away from his power. And it's actually going to make him way more effective than what he is right now. He's effective now. He's effective now, and he's the number two welt. I mean, sorry, I'm yawning at the same time. Sorry. But he's the number two heavyweight right now, and he's knocked out basically all the uh, knocked out basically everyone he's came to fight against besides Fury. You know, he's fought Luis Ortiz. I still think believe Luis Ortiz is literally underrated and one of the most dangerous fighters in the heavyweight division. Uh, I think I believe honestly he'll beat Dillian White. I believe he'll beat Anthony Joshua. I have that fight uh, like a 70-30 fight. I believe he'll beat Anthony Joshua. I believe he would have beat Pavekin if Pavekin the drug stuff didn't happen. I believe he beat Joseph Park. I believe he beats all those other heavyweights. But Fury's a different heavyweight because of the skill set. Like I said, so if he takes this, and it's not even just about the skill set. But it's also the mindset of it all, too. Because, you know, some people, when they get into stuff, they get into stuff because they consciously they know that if I don't do this or I, if I don't improve, then, you know, I'm never going to get to where I want to be. Or I'm never going to, like, for example, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but 
for people like like the mindset thing is so important because like consciously you can know you need to do something to get to where you want to be but even though you consciously know that you need to do those things you will never get there because your subconscious is going to disagree with you it's going to jeopardize you so it's also not even just the skill set and everything but it's the mindset of going it's the mindset of acknowledging that okay I lost because uh like for Deontay Waller like for me this is what I saw I saw him get outboxed outskilled and I, uh he was outboxed like he's outboxed in most fights but you obviously expect him to last to the 12th round so he could knock you out uh he was outboxed uh he was he was basically outmatched he was he he was beaten in the fashion that I never thought I saw him be, be beat and I'm not saying this to throw a slight at Wilder. I'm saying this because I'm a Wilder fan. I'm a hardcore Wilder fan. I'm going to rock with him, win, lose, or draw. But he has to come into the mindset now in this rematch if he decides to take it, which I do believe he should take it. He has to get in the mindset of, okay, I lost because not only because I was hurt in the fight, but I lost because I didn't have the boxing skill necessary to deal with that type of fight from Tyson Fury. And it's not a slight, once again, it's just being honest with, this is being honest with what I saw, and I think, hopefully, he's honest with what he uh, see when he watches the rematch, I mean, watches the fight over. And the reason this honesty part is so important, because you don't want to be delusional. You don't want to say, oh, he just hit me with a lucky shot. No, you, you were getting hit with multiple shots. For seven rounds. So, he has to come into the mindset of, okay, I lost because Fury was a more skilled uh, fighter than me. And most people have been more skilled fighters than me in the uh, ring. And in this fight, my power didn't come through for me because I couldn't land a clean punch because of the way Fury was fighting. me. But, I give myself a much better chance by learning the skill set of boxing as much as I can within the three months until the fight, it gives me, you know, it gives me, if I would have stayed to where I was, like in, I did in this fight, I only had probably like a 10% chance of winning. Even though people thought it was higher, I'm just giving like some example. I probably only had a 10% chance of winning. But at least if I improve my skill set, my power is still going to be there. It may be a 50-50 fight now. It may be, you know, a 60-40 fight in Fury's favor. But just just improving your skill set, it doesn't mean that your power is going to disappear. It's going to actually make you more dead. It's going to make you more deadlier because if you can set someone up and be able to box on the outside and uh, stand your ground as well and just improve, then it's going to be a much... He's going to have a better chance at winning the fight. That's my honest opinion, and also, like I said, the mindset plays a part in it. Uh, if you don't know me, mindset is very important. Uh, like uh, I've heard this, I heard Tony Robbins say this before. Eighty uh, percent of success is mindset, and twenty percent is a, is the actual skill and tactics. I believe that a hundred percent. And uh, for the people who think that three months aren't enough to become a, a skilled boxer or a good boxer, you'll be surprised uh, by how much shit you have in your life that actually takes up tons of your time. So for example, uh, when I was 18, I learned how to start a business, like a complete consulting business within, I learned how to start a complete consulting business within two months. No, not two months. Two weeks, sorry about that. I learned how to start a complete consulting business within two weeks. No degrees, no anything. Uh, I learned the skills. I learned how to set everything up. I learned how to streamline everything. Uh, I set up my consulting business within... Uh, I learned how to set everything up within two weeks. I had everything actually set up uh, within... I think it was like two to three days I had everything set up. For example, like uh, this is marketing... Uh, marketing terminology but I had like the funnel set up uh I had you know sales pages set up I had the uh my calendar set up everything 
And then within that week, I got a 1500 per month client to do their marketing for them. For them. Yeah, I had a 1500 1500 per month client to do their marketing for them within that same week. So you could learn a lot in uh you could learn a lot in the, in the time span. No, there's no doubt about it. If he has three months, he got become a better boxer. Now, obviously, he's going to need to get in the ring and spar with people and everything to substantially improve that. But you could learn a bunch of shit in a lot of time. It's kind of like, uh, and I did that. Honestly, I did that with no degree. I dropped out of college because I didn't believe college is for me, obviously. But I dropped out of college. So he could learn that sk- a skill set, the skill set of boxing in three months and I think that's probably way too much time because for example if he's in a gym eight hours a day learning boxing matter of fact forget eight hours if he's in the gym I don't even let's just put eight hours just to be there but I'm gonna use another example if he's in the gym eight hours um a day specifically learning boxing no distractions you know no distractions at all. He's just learning boxing, and that's his focus. He's going to uh, improve substantially compared to if he learned boxing, you know, and worked out for two hours, and then came back Wednesday, and then worked out for another two hours, and came back Friday, and worked out for another two hours. If you came into the gym in a mindset of, okay, I'm about to become the best fighter I can be and improve my skill set dramatically to give myself the best chance to become... I mean, become world champion again and beat Fury. And it's me versus the world. Everybody's going to be doubting me. If he gets in the gym every single day, you know, probably take Saturdays off. Um, Yeah, take Saturdays off. But every other day he's in the gym eight hours or even six hours a day. He's working on the skill set of boxing with his coaches. Deontay Wilder's going to be a way better fighter than what he was uh, in this last fight. And also, like I said, the mindset part is important too. Like imagining, you know, being successful. Imagining uh, you shadow boxing. A lot of boxers do that. I do that all the time. I imagine myself boxing and you'd be surprised by how uh, better you get because your brain can't tell a difference between what's imagined and what's reality. So that's why the most successful people use imagination because your brain can't tell a difference. If you could create the exact same sequence or view in your brain, uh, as you could in reality, your brain can't tell a difference. So mindset with mindset, and then just wanting the desire to come back and learn the skill set of boxing is going to be very important if Deontay Wilder is wanting to come back. And even if he doesn't beat Fury, I'm still going to ride with Deontay Wilder because I like Deontay Wilder. Like I said, I gave credit to Fury for uh, winning in the way he did, and just winning honestly because I didn't believe he would win, but. I'm still going to be my favorite heavyweight, Deontay Wilder, uh, at this point. So, that's basically my thoughts on if he's coming back. I mean, when he comes back, I believe he's going to accept the rematch, obviously. Uh, I think his uh, his trainer has said he's going to, going to accept the rematch. I don't know. It's going to be a very interesting matchup. Uh, I want to see how he comes back. I want to see if he comes back with that hunger. Uh, because now, since the way he was beaten, his pride is on the line. Uh, so he's going to have to throw all that pride and, uh, ego to the side of having all your faith in the right hand. Now it's going to take actually boxing skills to actually get you to the next level. Because if you beat, if Deontay Wilder comes back and beats Fury, and even if he doesn't outbox him, even if he just puts up a fight, like a better fight, people and people can see that he's more skilled than what he was last fight. And that he's more uh, confident in this last fight. And he wins. People are going to say, okay, he's the best heavyweight. This is a totally different fighter than the last fight. Now, if he comes into... If he does what he does to improve uh, improve his skills in boxing, IQ and things like that. And he comes in. And even if he loses, but everyone sees that he's dramatically improved. I believe people are still going to give him credit. I know there's going to be people out there who don't give him credit. But I'm still going to believe... Uh, if I see that, that I'm still going to believe uh, Deontay Wilder, he's trying to become a better fighter. So, honestly, 
if he comes in with that mindset, the mindset of improving and evolving as a fighter to become the best fighter he can be, as far as the skills, I'm not talking about the power. The power is always going to be there. I just want to make that clear. But the skills, then I believe he'll beat Fury. If he doesn't uh, come in, uh, if he doesn't come in, you know, with uh, if he does if he does come into the rematch and he hasn't like tried to improve his skills, he's just relying on the right hand again. Uh, honestly, I'm gonna still go for Deontay Wilder, but my confidence is gonna be way less than if he if he came in being more skilled and everything. It's kind of like the Anthony Joshua part, even though I really don't like Anthony Joshua. But at least with Anthony Joshua, when he lost, uh, he lost, he lost, and he did quit, and everything. But you can see in the rematch, he went straight to the gym and started improving his boxing, and then he outboxed Andrew Ruiz for twelve rounds straight. And people can say he was running and everything. I don't give a damn. You can say he was running. I'm gonna give credit to what credit to do. He said, "I'm not about to get in a, uh, a war with this dude. I'm gonna outbox him from the outside." I'm going to stay on my back foot. I'm going to counter him. I'm going to punch him. I'm going to jab him to death. He can't get close to me because I'm too big for him. And that was a smart thing to do. And he 12 rounds owed him. Now, nobody's even, nobody really even cares about Andy Ruiz anymore. So, that's basically my take on what's next for Deontay Wilder. Uh, I believe I believe if he comes back, like I said, if he comes back with that mindset on improving himself and becoming a better boxer, I believe he'll win. If he doesn't do that, I still got faith in him just because of his right hand. But at the same time, it may be the same fight as it was uh, last Saturday. And even if he loses, I still think that he's going to be the number two uh, heavyweight in the world. And I still do want to see Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder. But right now, the focus is all on Fury, obviously. But... That's it for this video. If you liked anything I said or this video gave you value, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It will mean a ton. Uh, also, join my Facebook group. It should be down below in the description. Chris Wolf Boxing Society. You can search it up on Facebook. Uh, and follow me on Instagram at Chris J. Wolf. Uh, I'm going to put, start putting everything back down in there because I know I took it off for a while to test some things. But that's basically it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah. I'm tired of people acting like they really need me Leaping over my enemies, I have so many memories Oh my niggas remember me, don't bring negative energy I see too many frenemies, y'all not no friends with me Don't have time for no injury I'm like fuck all my enemies, I've got so much energy I'm working every day, I'm just trying to find a way